I in the name of Jesus. Welcome everyone. Is my mic on? Does Eric have to come in? Welcome everyone to this beautiful Sunday morning. The Sunday before Christmas is next Sunday. Um, is everybody ready? No? Okay. So the handbell choir this morning is going to play Chatter with the Angels. It's an African American spiritual and it's organized, arranged, arranged by Sonia K. Tucker.
Thank you, Pam. We'll now have the lighting of the candles by Susan Johnson, Josh Trapasso, Ernestine Stansberry, and Eric Nelson. And the dogs. <laughs> Get the light from the front. The light. Nice. Oh, here's. <laughs> it's hard to light candles and be the tech at the same time. <laughs> Give it more week, um, Josh. Give it more week so you don't lose the light. Too much. That's the way. Test. <laughs> I can be in two places at a time, right? Yay. Like St. Francis. <laughs> the season is, of waiting is almost over. The light glowing from our Advent wreath is now brighter, and each candle is bringing us hope, faith, and joy. Light the candles. Oops. <laughs> the three so, first candles. Two blues. Two blue and one pink. Let us sing. Okay. Oh. Oh. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light the fourth and final blue candle on the Advent wreath, the angel's candle, which symbolizes peace. It reminds us of the message of the angels, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Listen to the words from Luke 2, 14, 18 to 14. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will, <clears throat> you will find a babe wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And all, now all pray together. Father, Father Son, and Spirit, only, only you can, can be, be peace be found in, in the, the midst, midst of, of the division, division oppression, oppression, brokenness, poverty and injustice that we see and experience around the world. We ask that your presence will overtake our doubts and fears. Keep our eyes fixed on you. May our life be a testament of your peace. May we bring agents of peace to those around us. In your name, amen. We light that candle? Oh, okay. Where are you? 
Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Que la paz de Cristo sea con todos ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. Amen. Our opening hymn will let's, be. Let's go and pass the peace. How about that? <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> let's say good morning and pass the peace of Christ. Number 202, People Look East. It's in the big fat hymn.
will have the children's sermon by Carmen Hortialis. Hi, everyone. I'm going to invite my son to be here with me, and he will help me to, to share this with all of you. I know it's children's time, and probably by next year we need more kids, okay? <laughs> he's, he's, kind, he's, kind of, he's kind of retiring for this, for this position. <laughs> He doesn't stop growing, even, even though I want it, but no, it's fine, it's fine. So, we, uh, last week, Susan started sharing about the piñatas that we were doing. Lupita had a workshop two Sundays before, and we learned about the piñatas. I don't know if you have certain information about piñatas, or is that, that's the thing that is hanging on the, the children's party, and then it's a time when the kids go, make a line and break the, the piñata and that's it. Well, I didn't know it was a story behind that, right? Lupita was explaining to us that when they were trying to evangelize people in Mexico, they used the piñata as a symbol, okay? And they start explaining why it's round, why they have the cones to get uh, attached. But I will show to you kind of the process that we were doing, right? In the circle, everything start with a circle, like that, it was a balloon. So there was like a paper together, a uh, uh, glue to it, to, the, to it, and it hardened. So this symbolized the world, okay? This is the world, it's empty in the side, so you, you will find out later why. So that's the word. And then the, the cones represent what? Somebody remember? Seven deadly sins. And I've, I didn't know why was deadly. Why? It will kill you. I thought it will never forgiven. I lost, I was lost. Yeah, but these, these sins will kill you. What were they? Gluttony. Vanity, envy, greed, lust, pride, procrastination, sloth. Yeah. Don't raise your hand, okay? Don't raise your hand. We're not making a test right now. But you know, these are the deadly sins. So they were trying to make the point to the people and explain that the word and the, and the sins. The sins are trying to attach to the world, right? And some of the sins doesn't stick very well. Let's say with people, right? You see, there's one there. <laughs> uh, there's one falling apart. But they have the, the sins stick to the world. And this, what else you, can you see on the, on the cones? Glitter things, right? To attract you, to lure you, okay? And the golden things, it like a, make you tempted to get it, right? And to be there, okay. After that, before you go, can you say that God has blessings for us, right? Oh. So inside the, when God, you know, created the world, he created also blessings for us. And those are the candy and the that goodies that go inside the piñata. But because of our sinful nature, those are always covered and, you know, and they're uh, inside. They will never be able to get to us unless we break the sin around us. Yeah. Well, this is kind of finished uh, piñata, right? It's, it's nice. The candies are inside. But... What else do we need for a piñata? It cannot be just hanging there. What do the kids use? A bat. Uh, uh, un palo, un stick, right? Yeah, okay, why? To break it. What does the bat or the stick represent? So the bat destroys the sins and lets the blessings out. Yes, so what is it? What is it? The war of God. 
the Bible. Yeah. The so truth. we use that truth. as a weapon, right? Because it's a weapon to destroy sin. the sins. Okay. And then when it's breaking, all the blessings fall and the people can take it. Okay. Right. So that's a, that's a lesson for today, right, Joel? What is yours? In the process, right? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you. you. So cool. Yay. So next time you break a piñata, you know what you're doing, right? You're trying to get the blessings of the Lord uh, pour out for all the, the, that are there. So, so why are they the Oh, because the lie blindfold you. you. You're blinded by the lies of the enemy, you know? And so that's why they blindfold you. So uh, you're, and you go around the world blindfolded, you know, you, and you don't really know that what you're facing. So that's why they do that. So, okay, cool. Let's, let's make a uh, short prayer for this lesson yes. and for my kids. My kids, your kids. Thank you, Lord, for this time and thank you for the lesson today, the teachers that you were can help us to destroy the sin that is around the world. And help us to be wise and use it wisely to help people to be uh, free from sin and receive your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory a Dios. Thank you so much. That was very enlightening. <laughs> I have this, I shared a story yesterday. My daughter, when she was about five, she said, Mom, for my birthday, I want a panada. <laughs> and I don't know where she got that pronunciation. Um, so as as we collect our offerings and prayer requests for today, let us be mindful that our giving allows us to bring good tidings of hope, faith, joy, and peace to those around us. Let us give with generosity.
Our scripture reading today comes from Colossians 3, 15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Send your spirit to fill our lives with your love, that we may not only hear, but, but also do your word. Amen. Amen. In 2003, Chris Hedges wrote an article in the New York Times, and it was entitled, What Every Person Should Know About War, in which he quoted that of the past 3,400 years, 3,400 years, um, humans have been entirely at peace for 268 of them. This is the 8% of the time recorded by history. I don't know if that's true. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how he got that quote. But anyway, whether the statement is factual or not, when it comes to understanding the concept of peace, we commonly think that the word peace tends to mean something like the absence of trouble or the absence of conflict which in part is true. But the Hebrew meaning of the word is much more than that. The peace candle that was lit today is a reminder of the promise made by the people of, for the people of God regarding the Christ child who would bring peace to the troubled world. Isaiah wrote or said, for us a child is born to us a child is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Now people were longing for the Messiah who would finally bring peace, an era of true peace, when his reign of justice, of mercy and, and uh, of love would come in all its fullness. In those days, when Christ was born, Rome had forced its will on the nations that they have conquered. The soldiers that were on the front lines of expanding the empire were now on every street corner. With brute force, they compelled the citizens to abide by the rules of the empire so that everyone could have what they called Pax Romana, the peace of Rome. Now in those days, Rome was not at war, but it was not peaceful either. <laughs> peace came at the cost of heavy handed oppression. It was only possible because of Rome's military might. Caesar Augustus brutally murdered and any perceived enemies. He achieved peace in the empire by suppressing human rights and liberties. Receiving the benefits of the Roman peace meant submitting to the totalitarian rule. And it was peace by coercion. People got along because if they didn't, if they challenged the reign of Rome, they would be nailed to the wooden cross. So a true shalom, which is the Hebrew word for peace, was what God had promised to his people in the days of the first advent of Jesus. As noted in the um, dictionary, in the HarperCollins Bible Dictionary, shalom includes peace, but also something else. It includes wholeness, well-being. Each week uh, during our time, of worship together, we begin our service with a, with a time called 
passing the peace. We take it as a time of greeting and saying hello to each other, perhaps catching up on, you know, what happened during the week or during the weekend. And theologically speaking, we are greeting each other with the words that were used by Christ himself, shalom. Everywhere he went, he would start, you know, whatever he wanted to do, saying shalom. Offering peace, wellness, fulfillment. We need to be reminded that in the days of Jesus, when one greeted someone with shalom, you were offering that person that complete blessing that, that meant tranquility and completeness and wholeness. That is what true biblical shalom means. An inward sense of completeness and tranquility or wholeness that can only happen in a world where there is true justice, where there is mercy, where there's reconciliation, when, when shalom is for all. Unfortunately, as we fell into the trap of selfish, we broke the shalom that existed at creation. Throughout the Old Testament, God unfolds his plan to reestablishing his shalom on earth. He has a plan. And uh, the word shalom occurs, occurs about 250 times in the Old Testament, reminding us of the desire that God has for us to come back to what we were meant to be and how we were meant to live. The Jewish word shalom does not occur at the, in the Greek New Testament. Uh, there is a, a Greek word though, that is almost identical to what shalom means, irene. And in the New Testament, it's revealed as a reconciliation of all things to God through the work of Christ. In any way, both words denote a similar concept, what the true biblical peace is all about. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the true biblical shalom or peace is not the absence of conflict, but it points to the presence of something in its place. So it's not the, uh, what, what can I, how can I say it? It's not um, absence, but presence. Right? And it has uh, the meaning of a total well being and security associated with God's presence among His people. True peace requires taking what's broken and restoring it to the wholeness, whether it is in our lives, whether it's in our relationships, whether it is in our world. And nobody can deny that in every aspect of our life today, we still feel the impacts of the fall, right? In many ways, through, though we want autonomy from God and, and we want to turn things to fulfill our selfish des desires, we feel desperation, hurt, agony, sadness, anger, envy, and all those things shatter our relationships. We struggle with depression, with pride, with insecurity, with self-doubt. Our brokenness primarily causes these damages um, in our souls and little by little kills us. Especially when we allow injustice, oppression, and evil with our silence and our lack of intervention. Today the earth is groaning under starvation, drought, floods, natural catastrophes. And it's all because really of our irresponsible behavior towards God's creation. 
We reject the reality that Jesus Christ is the Lord, is our Savior, and it's worthy of all honor, glory, and acclaim. And instead, we put other things, especially us, ourselves, before God. We put more faith, we put more trust, we put more love in ourselves than in God. We adhere to the lies and, and, uh, and reject to God's truth. And all relationships suffer because of the way we choose to live, which elevates the me and forgets about the us. Christ is calling us to be agents of peace, to be creators of peace, of true shalom that will bring his presence to our broken world that is divided, that is hurting, that is corrupted. When we extend mercy and appreciation to others, when we choose blessings above brow beating, when we are kind to those who are in our sphere of influence, when we live as a notice rather than a critic, when we express gratitude to those who interact with daily for our ongoing efforts, we bring peace. When we highlight virtues and promote development, when we dress as supporter rather than as critiques, when we confirm the integrity of those who are traveling with us in this journey called life, when we support their inclinations, their talents by standing by them, when we decide to encourage rather than to harm, when we salute those brave enough to face their fears and follow their callings, when we celebrate the excellent work of redemption shown in lives raised from the dead, that's when we start bringing shalom into our world. God brings shalom, God's healing of violence in our hearts and our communities and our world through us. We carry the peace. And we are called to give the peace to one another, to bring the presence of God to one another. We are indeed agents, ambassadors of Christ. We have been called to, to proclaim peace for the world pushing back darkness with words and deeds that will bring God's presence into our communities, our neighborhoods, our homes, until Christ comes in final victory to fulfill the promise of peace. That promise says that the law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he shall judge among the nations and shall reprove many peoples, and they shall forge their swords into plug chairs, and their spears into pruning knives. Nation, nation shall not lift a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That is the promise of shalom. And God is calling us to spread out the peace among all of us who are around us, even those who are in the midst of conflict, who are in the midst of oppression and injustice. Peace, the true shalom that comes from God, is something that our hearts desperately need. It doesn't mean that we are going to be, you know, um, protected from conflict or the results of conflict. What it means is that we will have God's presence in us that will allow us to confront 
that, you know, that conflict with a different perspective, with a different kind of sense in our minds, in our souls, in our hearts. So let us call for peace. Let us tell the world we want peace on earth, but not as, some, as something that we desired, you know, just as something. But when we go on and say we want peace on earth, we say, God, we want you to come with your presence and fill us with your peace. That the true shalom. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, as we come closer and closer to celebrating Christmas, the wonderful day in which we are reminded of the birth of, of the child, the Christ child, the Prince of Peace. We are coming to the moment where we need to understand what you are calling us to have and to give. A peace that surpasses all understanding. We don't know exactly, Lord, how to share that blessing with others, but you are a God that has called us to show in our words, in our deeds, to be agents of peace. So bring your presence into our hearts. Make your presence abide within us in such strong way that as we go and, and visit others, they can feel and sense that same presence in their spirits. We want to be contagious, not of the flu or other viruses. We want to be contagious of your peace of your love, of your hope, of your faith, of your joy. So help us, help us spread the good news. You are indeed coming in peace. A true shalom will prevail. Thank you. We pray in the name of the Prince, Prince of Peace, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. Our final hymn today will be number 209, Blessed Be the God of Israel.
Please join me in the prayer for going forward. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now it's time for any announcements. We want to make sure that you all are invited to Vespers tonight. I believe it's at five. At five o'clock, and we want you to uh, come and enjoy the beautiful voices and the beautiful um, uh, music that has been prepared for us this year. Um, the the choir, the our, our new choir, I'm going to call it like that. Our new choir has been rehearsing a lot, and we are so um, I am so grateful and so I don't know how to say overjoyed with the fact that you know we're going to be able to listen to what they've been uh, practicing all these times so praise be to god and we want you to be here and we also have some um the kids will uncover in a little in a few seconds that table back there that has a lot of goodies and we want you to enjoy the cookies and all that uh today after we end our worship time together and also to invite you to candlelight next uh, December 24th. It's our candlelight mm -hmm. service and we have prepared uh, our carols and our lighting of candles and we need readers. So uh, Laura is getting some names together and I am also getting names from El Buen Pastor because we're uh, joining both churches on December 24th at seven here at our church. And then we'll celebrate Christmas, right? On uh, next Sunday. So um, I encourage you next Sunday to wear red <laughs> and to be very Christmassy and so that we can celebrate the birthday of our Lord. Amen. What a wonderful birthday to celebrate, huh? Yeah. Better than mine. So, <laughs> so let's come with festive clothing and celebrate uh, next time. Yes, we need prayer requests, and we kind of skip that a little, but uh, we do have some uh, requests this week. I'm, I'm going to say that um, Pat and Bob had reminded me that they're very concerned of their nephew. The 6.5 yes. nephew, uh, Jim. He's six think, foot Jim? five, and he has cancer in his spine. Yeah. It's and, Jim, right? Yeah, Jim. So yeah. we need to keep him in prayer. I'd like prayers for Morgan McEwen. Oh, yeah, Morgan. She's only 34. She has four children. The littlest two are adopted, and she has sarcoma, and it's spread. And she's on chemo. She's one of six or seven people that have this type of sarcoma in the US. And the doctor said the chemo really won't help much, but the, the, it hasn't increased. So that's a blessing. And so I just would like prayers for her and the family and her parents are Lori and, and, and Steve McEwen. And that, Morgan's the oldest. So that's just, um, and I'd like prayers for Mimi's neighbor, Kim. He has very, he has stage four cancer, I believe. The chemo's over, but he has a feeding tube. It's in his face, in his jaw, he can't eat. And he's a little bit better this week, so just your prayers are keeping him going. So please pray for Kim as well. Okay, and also we uh, need to keep uh, the Ortiales family in prayer. They are going to be leaving uh, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. So uh, traveling mercies and prayers for both of your parents for your and her mom is Ophelia's having a knee replacement and dad has uh, cancer of the thyroid and he's going to go undergo tests and see if they're going to remove the thyroid at this point. So yeah. prayers and traveling mercies for them. Yes. And, and uh, keep praying for us as well. Uh, I'm re trying to get rid of this bronchitis and and thing, whatever it is. Um, and the doctor said that it's something that's going on and that will last for uh, 
no less than four weeks or five weeks. So oh. I'm, I'm just hoping that he's wrong. You know, I'm trusting that my Lord, you know, has healing for us. So keep, on, keep us in prayer. So. So much to you on the for their gift to the one step for the Christmas store. Yes. I'm going to start from here, I guess. Are they still taking stuff? Um, no, they had it yesterday. Had so, but it's the Christmas store is so the kids can go and find presents for their siblings, presents for their parents. These are not kids that are going to be able to do that otherwise. Thank you. Let us get in our table, right? Yeah. And this right here. So I'll say a few. I forgot to go down and down during the hymn, so. Yes, yes, we do. 